I'll be leaving here in the morning, Leech. Oh. Yeah, that would figure, McKay. I don't know why you thought you had to come say goodbye. Goodbye that I have in mind will take a little more room than we have in here. Charlton Heston, did you know? Chuck to his friends, Heston was a complex and talented actor that made some of the most consequential movies of the last century. Do you think you know him? Well, let's see. Today's video may reveal some info you didn't know about this great actor. If you like this video, hit notification to get my new videos. If you want to check out my others, head over to my channel. The link is in the description. Like, share and subscribe. You know the drill. Appreciate it. Really. Let's get into it. Heston missed the start of his presentation at the 44th Annual Academy Awards 1972 because he had a flat tyre on the Santa Monica Freeway. Clint Eastwood stood in for him and before Eastwood could finish the speech that Heston was due to give, Heston arrived to some audience laughter and enjoyment. When I brought those tablets down from the mountain, C.B. DeMille's... <laughs> I should have brought that staff. There are 11. The 11th commandment comes from the Federal Communications... When Heston asked director James Cameron why he wanted him to play Spencer Trilby in True Lies, 1994, Cameron replied, I need someone who can plausibly intimidate Arnold Schwarzenegger. You're new on Harry's team, aren't you? Yes. So what makes you think the slack I cut him in any way translates to you? When he met Toshiro Mifun around 1960, he was extremely taken with the Japanese star and claimed that if Mifun spoke English, he could be the greatest star in the world. The two actors exchanged Christmas cards since their meeting until Mifun's death. said that Planet of the Apes 1968 was the most physically demanding film he had ever done. Was sick with the flu during filming. The producers decided to have him act through his illness, even though it was physically gruelling, because they felt the hoarse sound of his voice added something to the character. Heston recounted in a diary he kept during filming that he felt like hell during the filming of the scenes when his character was forcefully separated from Nova, Linda Harrison made worse by the impact of the fire hose used on him. After his starring role in the original version of Planet of the Apes 1968, he had the uncredited cameo in the remake, Planet of the Apes 2001, as General Thade's dying father. He was chosen to betray Moses in the Ten Commandments 1956 by Cecil B. DeMille because he bore an uncanny resemblance to the statue of Moses carved by Michelangelo. Bondage of Egypt. They shall die in his mighty hand. Those who will not live by the law shall die by the law. Along with Tony Curtis, Heston admitted to voting for Russell Crowe to win the Best Actor Oscar, saying before the ceremony, I hope he gets it. He's very good. 2001. I just don't thank enough, I suppose. And um, an incredible cast walking before. Initially turned down the role of Steve I'll Leach in the, in the Big Country, 1958, because he didn't think the role was huge enough after the success he had with the Ten Commandments, 1956. But his agent convinced him to take the role on the grounds that it would be worth it for his career to work with both Gregory Peck, who was still a bigger here. star than Heston at the time, and director William Wyler. This association led to Heston being cast 
in Wyler's next film as the title character in Ben-Hur, 1959, for which he won the Oscar for Best Actor. Accepted the role of Ben-Hur after Burt Lancaster turned down the role. And grant me vengeance the day. He turned down the role of General Joseph W. Stilwell in Steven Spielberg's comedy 1941-1979 because he felt the film was an insult to World War II veterans. Very popular in Japan, where even his less successful films were generally well received, because his screen persona embodied the qualities that the Japanese had admired in their samurai warriors. The actors he admired the most were Gary Cooper, Henry Fonda, Clark Gable, Every part you lose is a heartbreaker. Uh, Cary Grant, the, uh, well, I remember very and James Stewart. Letters, wasn't it? Yes. He wore a hairpiece in every movie from Skyjacked 1972 so onwards. Kind of Had a fondness for drawing oh, and sketching, think, and well, often sketched the, the cast and crew of his films whenever he had the chance to do so. His sketches were later published in the book Charlton Heston's point. Hollywood, 50 Years right. in American nuts. Film. They're seldom. His funeral was held a week after his death, on 12 April 2008, a ceremony which was attended by 250 people, including former First Lady Nancy Reagan, California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, Olivia de Havilland, Keith Carradine, Pat Boone, Tom Selleck, Oliver Stone, and Rob Reiner, requested cremation in his will, explaining after a lifetime of performing and wearing makeup, he didn't want his body presented after his death. His professional name of Charlton Heston came from a combination of his mother's maiden name, Leela Charlton, and his stepfather's last name, Chester Heston. A frail-looking Heston was presented with a Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian award, at the White House by George W. Bush, July 2003. Broke his nose in high school playing football. He later commented that it was ultimately to his advantage as an actor because this gave him the profile of an eagle. Before somebody pointed out it should be. He was the original choice to star in Alexander the Great, 1956, but declined so he could play Moses in the Ten Commandments, 1956. The role eventually went to Richard Burton. After their son was born, they decided to adopt their next child so that they could be sure it would be a girl. Heston and his wife felt that one son and one daughter made the perfect family. While they were starring in a play together in 1960, Lawrence Olivier told Heston that he had the potential to become the greatest American actor of the century. When the play received unfavorable notices, Heston said, I guess you learned to forget bad notices. To which Olivier replied, what's more important, laddie, and much harder, learn to forget good notices and they don't know him, what, what, what would they do? Uh, a couple of people have been bitten. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, the sign is for real, don't they? Admiration for the late actor, Gregory uh, Peck, despite their opposing political ideals. Like I'll be leaving here in the morning, Leach. Oh. Yeah, that would figure, McKay. Heston's Hollywood mansion is filled with memorabilia from his career. He and his wife have resided in the same house near Los Angeles, Mulholland Drive, for more than 40 years. Built by the actor's father after Heston won the Academy Award for Best Actor in Ben-Hur, 1959. The postmodern style home, Inside and Out, is filled with memorabilia. 
Sitting on a table in the backyard is the figure of a Roman, whip in hand, lashing vigorously at four straining horses harnessed to a chariot. Mounted on the entrance of his study are the two great brass ring knockers from the movie sets House of Her. Hung above the fireplace is a painting of a lumbering Conestoga wagon and nearby a pencil sketch of friend Sir Laurence Olivier portraying King Lear. From most windows sparkle views of canyons. In the home's central hallway hang 20 paintings of Heston in signature roles Ben-Hur, Moses, Richelieu, Michelangelo, The Planet of the Apes 1968, Marooned Astronaut Commander Taylor, The Steel-Willed Major Dundee, Soylent Green 1973, Detective Thorne, Andrew Jackson in The President's Lady 1953. Tough Ranch foreman Steve Leach, Riding Through the Big Country, 1958, and Cattle Poke, Will Penny, 1967, from Heston's favourite film. Although Heston was a lifelong non-smoker, he did hold a pipe in some early publicity photographs because both Clark Gable and Cary Grant smoked pipes. Unlike many of his contemporaries, Heston continued to act on the stage. He appeared in Long Day's Journey Into Night, opposite Deborah Carr, Macbeth opposite Vanessa Redgrave, and The Kane Mutiny with Ben Cross. His final stage role was opposite his wife, Lydia Clark, in Love Letters, at the Haymarket Theatre in London in the summer of 1999. Show up on time, know your words, and don't bump into anything. Does that hell true for you? <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> He's made it. Did a great deal of research on the historical Cardinal Richelieu for his appearance in The Three Musketeers, 1973, The Four Musketeers, Milady's Revenge, 1974, even though the character is portrayed as an antagonist, Heston gained a great deal of respect for the man's real accomplishments on behalf of France. He came across a quote attributed to Richelieu, I have no enemies, France has enemies. He liked the line so much that he insisted it be worked into the films somewhere. And he ultimately got his wish, though slightly modified, I have no enemies, only enemies of France. The line appears in the second film, in the scene where Richelieu offers D'Artagnan the opportunity to be one of his soldiers. France has enemies. <laughs> one of the best speeches I've had this side of Shakespeare. Cited actor Gary Cooper as a childhood role model. Heston starred opposite Cooper in The Wreck of the Mary Deer, 1959. Heston commended Cooper for being able to perform his own stunts such as being underwater for long periods of time, despite being in poor health and getting older. Heston was a popular actor in Greece, where his name was written as Cholton Easton, on account of Heston having scatological connotations in the Greek language. He turned down an offer to co-star with Marilyn Monroe in Let's Make Love, 1960, in order to be directed in a play by Sir Laurence Olivier, whom he greatly admired. A World War II US Army veteran, he visited troops fighting during the Vietnam War in 1967. In fact, in one camp in South Vietnam's Delta area, he was initiated into the GI's on-base club by having to receive a kiss on the ear. was president of the Screen Actors Guild from 1966 to 1971. While studying acting early in his career, he made ends meet by posing as a model in New York at the Art Students League, across from the Carnegie Hall. The lure of Hollywood and a contract soon ended his modeling days. Drinking cold coffee out of paper cups and sitting in an office with your shoes. He appeared with Sir Christopher Lee in four films, Julius Caesar, 1970, The Three Musketeers, 1973, The Four Musketeers, Milady's Revenge, 1974, and Treasure Island, 1990. 
cited not doing an Hispanic accent for his Mexican narcotics officer, Miguel, Mike Vargas, in the film noir, Touch of Evil, 1958, as one of the biggest mistakes he had ever made as an actor. Lord Lawrence Olivier was so impressed with Heston's stage skills that he commented that Heston had a future on the stage. His wife calls him Charlie, but everyone else calls him Chuck. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take a look at my channel and check my Facebook page. The links are in the description. I am Wrangler. Bye for now. See you again soon. But I must say that's one of the castings I agree with, though. <laughs>